Okay, guys, this video is very dry. It's very science heavy. So if you don't want to see that, I made an abridged version. You can check it out in the description down below. Also, minor spoilers, they're out of context, so they shouldn't bother you. Hey, everybody, it's Triple L. And now let's talk My Hero Academia, this time specifically looking at Momo's quirk creation. The point of this video, though, is to show you why this quirk became so overpowered. So I'm going off script. It's going to be a bit more of a free flowing discussion because of that. I might mess up my words a little bit more often, but guys, uh, bear with me and let's just have some fun with this. Now creation, we all know it. Basically it allows Momo to create materials. She can create most objects in the manga already. We've seen her create a bunch of stuff. Some of it's really impressive. Some of it's kind of mundane. She can make flashbangs. She can make a cannon. She can make a metal stick, right? She, she has a pretty wide range of stuff. We know that her ability to do that, she's manipulating things on a microscopic level. She's manipulating molecules and all that. Of course, creation also requires a lot of intelligence from Momo because for her, she, on her side, she needs to know the molecular structure of the majority of the things that she wants to make. And that can be um, reinforced with the things that we have seen her make so far. But there was one creation in particular that blew the door open on what she was actually capable of. And it was because this creation specifically is of such a fundamentally different nature than everything else she had that it encompassed way more properties than anyone could have ever thought and that was specifically the creation of momo's transmitter and tracking device the reason that these creations stand out above the others is because this isn't a simple little thing of like a flashbang, which is a, a combination of mechanical and then some chemical components inside. It ain't the combination of a catapult. It ain't the same as a cannon, which is gunpowder and some metal. No, when you have a electronic device, things change up because not only are you creating material, you're also creating a, a device that revolves around circuit logic and human logic. And when that gets involved, things get kind of messy. So for this, we're going to go through what exactly makes that tracking device so special and how that makes Momo special. And we're going to talk about the nitty gritty of actually what an electronic device implies for when Momo is doing this. So we're going to start really small and then we're going to kind of build our way up because like, I want you guys to really get a sense for what was going on when she created that tracking device. So first off, the first fundamental assumption um, in the manga, they're kind of vague about it, but most likely that tracking device it's a GPS and I'll have a picture of what it looks like and a little chip that she used. It's most likely a GPS and like there's really no way around it. Like for, to, for you to have a tracking device, most likely it is revolving around some satellite positioning system. Um, that won't really mind, but we need it for an assumption that we're going to make later on. So just keep that in mind. Now let's start talking circuits and circuit logic. Let's break it down to the absolute fundamental smallest bit. And we're going to start talking about semiconductors. Oh, and guys, mind you, since we're going into like relatively in-depth science, I'm going to have a lot of articles uh, linked down below in the description. Uh, that said, it's, a, it's, a, it's relatively information heavy, but I did pick out some articles that I thought did a pretty good job of explaining the general process. But it's very important to keep in mind that this is all referenced with the actual science in mind. So anyway, semiconductors. Here's what makes them so special, right? They, by nature, aren't materials that neatly fall into a category. It's not simply a conductor which lets electricity flow through or an insulator which lets electricity not flow through. Um, they have that kind of in-between state. The semiconductor in specific that we're going to be talking about is silicon. Now, silicon is very important. It's used in a lot of the manufacturing process for microchips and just regular circuit components. It's one of the most important elements when it comes to creating and the fabrication of these components. Now, the way we use silicon is that we go, we put it through a process called doping. Doping changes the properties of the silicon by adding in other elements. Now, I'm not going to go into the actual polarities of the elements, but the general idea that you should keep in mind here is that you can get a different component dependent on what you're doping into the silicon. Uh, this, the doping itself, adding in those extra impurities, changes the behavior of the device that you're making. Now, this is an extremely important in the grand scheme of things when you consider that if you put this in a circuit, Ultimately, you changing the balance of distribution of these two little elements that are going into that silicon, changing that balance is going to break your circuit. You cannot simply have an element and just throw it in there willy nilly and hope that your circuit is going to be working. Like, so this is the first big stipulation. When Momo's creating that electronic device, she is keeping track of very small elements to the point that she has to like get the proportions just right in order to make sure that she does not fry her circuit. So like for this part, the basic thing you have to take away, 
semiconductors revolve specifically around very controlled proportions of two elements. And again, Mom was manipulating things on a molecular level. This is totally within her ability to do so. Now, moving on, let's move up. Let's talk about transistors, one of the products that you get from semiconductors. So a transistor as a device is extremely important. Here's a picture of one. Now, maybe if you've popped open an electronic before, you've seen it, right? This is effectively a micro scale uh, transistor, one that you can see. Now, the transistor in particular, continues on with the idea of a semiconductor. It's again gonna be based around the silicon semiconductor. It's gonna have silicon that's been doped differently. And I have a little diagram here just to show you just a very quick schematic of the general uh, transistor setup. Now, as you'll see, it has like some for a few more components, which really only makes things a little bit more difficult for Momo. But the thing with the transistor is how important this device is. This is a very fundamental device. And again, keep in mind, we've already established that Momo needs absolute control of proportions. If you can accept that she needs that, that's totally fine. But yeah, this transistor, the moment that Momo made that GPS device, she's guaranteed that she has hundreds of transistors in there. But when it comes to transistor, again, going back to the thing about semiconductors, if you get even something in the proportions wrong for that transistor, you are getting drastically different behavior. And if you're getting drastically different behavior, you may be destroying your circuit or making it just non-operational. So with the transistor, just keep in mind, this is the most important component that we're gonna be talking about and focusing on for the purpose of talking about Momo's quirk. This is a GPS, it's an electronic. So naturally, this thing has a processor inside of it because by logic, it has to be able to calculate things based on what it's receiving, what signal it's receiving. Not only that, it has an LCD screen. So just by virtue of what of the nature of the device, it needs to have a processor. Now, the next stage of this discussion is gonna be talking about, well, what kind of processor does it have and why does that make a difference? Well, I went over and it took me a while, but I found a example uh, GPS. We're just gonna be using it. So I went online and I have the link down below. I found a GPS chip, it's called a GPS multi-chip module. So this is pretty much the brains of a GPS. Now the most important information that we're gonna take from this fact sheet is a, f a few little bits. First off, uh, the, we're gonna keep a note of the memory system because we'll talk about that in a bit. That's gonna be very important as well. But we'll also take note of this little detail right here. It's the ARM7 TDMI. Now, I couldn't find the exact information beyond that point, but I also have another link to an article down below if you wanna check it out. Here's what we're gonna look at when it comes to a, a processor chip. Keep in mind the transistors and how finicky they are by virtue of like the proportions of the doping that you have to do. So a processor, you guys kind of know what they look like. They're pretty much just, you know, what's inside your computer, they, that little square, that little chip, the microchip, that's pretty much a processor. What's important here is that transistors are the basis of how these things work. So a common statistic to have for processors is your transistor count. And for this chip that we've just sourced from this uh, GPS manufacturer or whatever, that chip has 578,977 transistors. That's a pretty big number. And if you know the size of microchips, you know how big that number is in proportion to the surface area you actually have. And just for the record, the die size of that particular processor is 68.51 millimeters squared. Uh, this chip is based on ARM7 and that was made in 1994. This is very old technology. Um, by today's standards, we have microchips with over a million or a billion transistors inside of them. Um, but thankfully, because this is a simple device, we don't really have to worry about it. But again, 578,000 transistors. So what ultimately ends up happening when you put this back into perspective with Momo is not only is she keeping in mind the proportions of what element she has to put into her silicon to make it a proper device, not only is she keeping in mind the doping proportions to make sure that her devices are still working, she's also creating hundreds of thousands of them in very quick succession. And here's where it gets even, here's where it gets a lot more impressive. The fabrication rates of CPUs, the fabrication rates of processors, the fabrication rates of semiconductors, it's not perfect. There's a lot of failure within that process. So with Momo, you quickly realize not only is she potentially hitting 
fabrication rates that exceed a lot of the industry standards that we have so far, she's also producing them on an extremely small level. And this is a bigger deal because this isn't simply like producing gunpowder. You have to produce this with order. There is an order to how these devices work. Even in a microchip, you know, they do not put in the big version of a transistor. It's all just metal layered on top of metal. That's what it looks like in a microchip. But she has to do that with such perfection, with such precision that it would not cause any kind of short circuit within the chip. That's pretty incredible. That by virtue of itself is incredible. The big things to take away from here are the quantity of the transistors she has to make, the fact that those transistors are extremely reliant, logic order and precise proportions, and also just the, the sheer scale of what she's making. And you know, if we stop there, you know, that's just like, wow, okay, that's incredible. But because this is an electronic device with an interface, with a lot of things going on with a signal processing unit, because it has to be able to process the signal that's coming in from her little, uh, her little transmitter, you add in another variable in this. And that was the memory system that this chip has. And you might be wondering like, well, why does a GPS need memory? Like you're not saving anything on it. And it's like, no, buddy, listen, all electronics that are processing anything need to have memory because that memory is where the programming is stored. Here comes the next big issue. Momo, to be able to produce that electronic, has to produce an equivalent of a programming language. And now you might be asking, well, wait, how can you program something like Momo's on a computer? Like, how is she doing that? Well, it comes back down to the very basics of what programming is and what it ultimately means to a computer. Like you, majority of people know zero and ones, binary, that's the fundamental basis of all programming languages, the fundamental basis of how computers work, zeros or one. But how does that translate into the physical world? Well, zeros or one in the physical world are really just a case of a high charge in comparison to a low charge, or sorry, a high voltage in comparison to a low voltage. I think voltage is the more correct term. Um, for instance, a one, for a computer in our real world might just be five volts on a piece of metal. A zero might be 2.5 volts or one volt on a piece of metal. That potential difference is what ultimately means a zero or a one. Now, uh, coming back into the flash memory, this is important because when you look at how flash memory works and when you look at the fundamental components of flash memory, you realize Momo, by the logic of what she's created, has to be able to control the presence or absence of electrical charges. There's no way around that. What that ultimately means is that for Momo to get a device that works like a GPS that is able to do the calculations, she needs to know the exact position of a charge on each and every little piece of metal that's within that memory system, which is possible because a charge is ultimately just the overabundance or lack of abundance of electrons. So within the idea of that she's able to uh, control molecules, she should be able to control electrons or at least control the transfer of electrons. So what you should ultimately take away from this part, aside from being just amazed, is that for Momo to make this device work, not only did she have to get the physical proportions right, she also had to be able to create a charge on a piece of metal and all those charges together could be interpreted into the programming language that's ultimately telling the device how to process things and, and how to interpret the signals it's getting. And on Momo's side, it ultimately means that Momo had to know the state of this very small part of this system to know where exactly to put the charges on those pins. And again, you cannot argue that the charges are not there. You cannot argue, wait, wait, if you turn off the device, does that mean all the electricity is gone? No, that's not how that works. If you turn off the device, there is still a charge within the metal in the device. By virtue that the only way that GPS is going to be able to work is if it has code in it. It means that Momo was able to mimic the charge conditions of a actual GPS that would have been created by the programming point here is Momo has to be able to control the presence of the charges. So when you look at Momo's power, all in particular, and what it ultimately does, you have fabrication rates that might exceed industry standard. You have precision on a whole different level because it's precision with order because otherwise everything will break. And then you have uh, programmable logic. And again, if you look at that GPS, you'll notice that there's even little buttons on it. That means Momo also created the logic for what happens when you press a button. Again, and the only way she can do that is if she is able to manipulate the presence or absence of electrical charge. And if she's able to manipulate the presence or absence of electrical charge, 
And that means by all measures that Momo would be able to create a thin layer of metal on, on her hand, should be able to charge it to an extraordinary degree and then shock people with it. Effectively rendering Kaminari useless when compared to Momo, just by virtue of what the little device did. So those are all the things that I really wanted to point out with Momo's GPS and what it ultimately meant for the character. Like, people say that Izuku's smart, people say that Hasune Mei is smart, buddy, listen, by what Momo is able to do, she must be a super genius, all right? And what makes it more incredible is that when she initially did this, she had gotten a bunk on her head due to nightly activities. That bunk on her head was something that she might have had to go to the hospital for because people were like, oh my god, you know, that might be a concussion. You might have to be hospitalized. It was a serious bunk on the head when she made those devices and she still pulled it off. Not only that, like the memory recall to be able to like pull out all the schematics, my god. But yeah, Momo's quirk is incredible when you look at what it is able to create and again the precision and accuracy that this girl is producing it with is the most incredible thing but yeah guys with momo like i really do think this girl's memory is on a whole other level because she's memorizing schematics she's memorizing microscopic layouts for a chip a transistor whatever she's memorizing those microscopic layouts and she's memorizing the flash configuration for how to charge the little pins inside of a chip that is ridiculous man like that's on a whole other level but yeah guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video a lot of physics kind of well not really we're just talking physics we didn't go into any formula so it's not that bad again a lot of articles referenced down below if you want to check them out uh, go for it it's it's a pretty big it's go for it you know some of the articles are really nice um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.